Good evening. My name is Enos Harris, Hearing Officer for San Francisco Public Works. Cerise Waters is the clerk of this hearing. This hearing is being recorded via Zoom and will be available afterward through a link on the San Francisco Public Works website, sfpublicworks.org. As this is a virtual hearing, there is no sign-in sheet. So if you would like to receive information about the results of this hearing, please send an email to the email address listed on the hearing notice. This public's hearing is being held to consider two items. Order number 210125 to remove to consider removal of one street tree without replacement adjacent to 89 Harriet Street. Order number 210126 to consider removal of one street tree without replacement adjacent to 533 Ellsworth Street. <clears throat> Excuse me, my job as a hearing officer is to gather the facts for the hearing item, listen to your testimonies, and help our director of public works make determinations. I will not be making any decisions today. Instead, I will forward the findings from this hearing and make my recommendations to the director. The director will make the final determinations. When the director's determinations are made, the department will notify you of them if you have provided contact information. This hearing will proceed as follows for two cases. I will ask public work staff to speak first and present the case. There is no time limit for this presentation. Then I will allow the property owner or appellant or applicant to speak, then any member of the public or witness who wants to speak. Each speaker will have up to three minutes. The clerk will monitor the time for all speakers and will indicate when the speaker has 30 seconds left. If you are a party to this proceeding, I will call on you to speak. If you would like to use visual materials in your presentation, please let me know before you speak. You will then have the standard three minutes to provide your comments. If you are a member of the public or witness who wants to speak, wait for me to, wait for me to call for public comments, then use Zoom's raise your hand feature if you are on a computer to put yourself in the queue to speak. If you are dialing in on your phone, dial star nine to indicate your hand, to indicate your raising hand. <clears throat> when it is your turn to speak, I will recognize you. If on your phone and you're muted, press star six to unmute yourself. If you would like to use visual materials in your presentation, please let me know before you speak. You will then have the standard three minutes to provide your comments. Comments and questions should be to addressed to me and not to the department or applicants. If you cannot finish your comments within, within the allotted time, you may submit written testimony to me by the end of this hearing. If I feel that a question is warranted, I will ask the question. After all comments are, are completed, I will close the item. We will now begin the hearing. At this time, we will open the hearing to public comments. Members of the public may make comments on matters that are within the member with, with, that are within the department's jurisdiction, but not on today's agenda. Are there any public comments at this time? Um, can you hear me? Yes. Go ahead. Yes. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So uh, I just want to make the point that at 13.7%, San Francisco has the smallest urban canopy of any major city in the United States. San Francisco's 2014 Urban Forest Plan and 2021 Climate Action Plan have tree planting goals, which we won't even come close to reaching unless we plant 5,000 trees per year. We're currently planting less than half of that per year. In 2017, San Francisco conducted a street tree census. And since then, we've actually net lost nearly 1,300 street trees, not to mention the hundreds of trees lost in parks and on private property. 
The 2021 Climate Action Plan called for a policy of preserving trees for construction and infrastructure improvements, and it called for this policy by 2023, which was last year, and we still haven't done it. The Climate Action Plan also said that if tree preservation was impossible, then we needed to implement a basal area replacement policy by 2023, and we haven't done that either. The Climate Action Plan didn't call for these policies because they were just nice to have we call for them because they are a need to have as part of a larger plan for San Francisco's climate resilience. According to our city's own plans, records and reports, we're failing ourselves and our future by continuing to remove trees without exploring alternatives, by allowing other driveways and other ecosystem ruining infrastructure to permanently remove tree planting locations. We're not coming close to replacing what we're taking out. And it's against all this backdrop that I hope the department will consider the matters on tonight's agenda. Thank you. Are there any other public comments at this time? Okay, I see another hand. Hi, I'm, my name is Gary. I'm actually the property owner at 533 Ellsworth. I'm not sure if you're ready to call on me yet. No, we're not there yet. We're at public comment. Okay, I can wait. Are there, any other, are there any other public comments at this time? Okay, if no more comments on this item, I will close this item. This item is now closed. The first item on today's agenda is order 210125. May I have Public Works make its presentation. Thank you, Officer Harris. Are you? Is everybody able to hear me? I can yes, we can hear you. Yes. Great. And uh, are you able to see the screen here? Yes. All right. So thanks for joining our public hearing this after, this evening. I'm just going to run through our uh, pretty much just the background of why we have these hearings. Um, so the Bureau of Urban Forestry is tasked to um, help uh citizens of San Francisco, as well as residents, uh, developers, and everybody else who uses the space, um, get the most out of their uh, the urban forest. So uh, our mission is to preserve and grow the urban forest while balancing the safety and needs of the growing and evolving city. Uh, we have a Street Tree SF maintenance program um, this is pretty much how trees in the sidewalk get maintained, pruned, removed on a uh, pretty much a grid cycle, a block maintenance cycle. And um, it's not really super relevant to uh, tree hearing removals, tree removal hearings, but um, it's just a way that we uh, manage and maintain the trees in the street and in the sidewalk. So San Francisco has a tree ordinance um, that's uh, Article 16 of the Public Works Code, and it's the Bureau of Urban Forestry's responsibility to uh, enforce and uphold the Article 16 tree ordinance. So when um, somebody from the public, a resident or a developer, adjacent property owner, wants to remove a tree, they will uh, apply for a removal permit. Um, and there were, and uh, if the department needs to remove a tree, then we will post the tree for removal and uh, follow the code, Article 16 code. So um, there's been important updates from February 2022. If uh, the department is going to remove a tree, that is the Department of Public Works is going to remove a tree, then replacement will be required within 120 days or it will be added to a delayed replacement tree report. If the tree cannot be planted because of conflicts with utilities or any of our planting guidelines, then ideally it will be planted uh, in a nearby location, uh, you know, ideally in the same neighborhood or around on the same block. Sometimes it's not feasible to do that. So um, we try to get creative. If a property owner or an applicant is granted a removal permit, so this is not the department removing a tree, then the applicant or permittee will require replacement tree of equal value 
uh, one uh, that's to the one that's removed. So we would appraise the tree and uh, try to get a similar size tree or, you know, the largest uh, nursery stock tree um, available. And if they can't plant the value of the tree with the nursery um, tree, then they will pay uh, in lieu of planting fee to, to make up the difference, or they'll plant multiple uh, nursery size trees. Um, and, you know, you could get 36 inch box trees. They have uh, quite a larger value than a 24 inch box or a 15 gallon tree. So um, if people in the public have questions about that, we can uh, send more information your way or, or you can read it in the code, Article 16 code. So um, moving on here. So we, we take a lot of things into consideration when we're um, when we're assessing trees for removal. Um, on the top here, you could see uh, criteria that will uh, pretty much approve removal. If the tree is dead, if it's dying or it's significantly stressed, critically stressed, um, or not thriving, you know, maybe being attacked by a pest or a fungus or a pathogen, will approve for removal. Um, if this if the species of tree is poor for that location, if the species planted there is too large and it's uh, creating uh, access issues or uh, uh, co overly costly maintenance issues, then uh, it's not really sustainable for that location. So we'll also approve trees for that reason. If the tree is damaging adjacent property, so if the roots have uh, damaged a foundation or grown into a basement causing water problems, or if the tree uh, is so large that it's damaging the adjacent property, and we can't manage that damage through pruning or other uh, management strategies, then we'll approve the tree for removal. And of course, if the tree is hazardous and that hazard cannot be mitigated through pruning practices, then we'll also approve it for removal. We also have other um, approval criteria. So a lot of times development will uh, have a difficult time working around a tree. If a tree has been planted in a location that can't be worked around, um, usually due to grading or trenching or installation of uh, needed utilities, then um, Usually because of that work, the tree can become destabilized. Uh, you know, structural roots would need to be severed in order for that work to be completed. And that could create a imminent risk of tree failure one, two, three years down the road. And if that's going to be the case, then we'll typically approve the removal of the tree. Um, if that's going to be the case, then we request that the applicant and typically require that the applicant will provide sufficient supporting documents. So they'll have an engineer tell us that the, the roots need to be cut in this location, things like that. Um, and usually some, uh, usually a lot of sometimes, more than sometimes, those trees can be in good condition. And um, the tree is then assessed, the, the value is appraised, and then we will uh, seek the replacement following the Article 16 code. So that's a little bit of background. So we'll get into the first order here. Um, this is to consider the removal of one street tree without replacement adjacent to 89 Harriet Street. The permit is 794943. Our staff has approved the removal and the, the removal has been uh, protested. So the tree at 89 Harriet Street is a Tristaniopsis lorina or a small leaf Tristania. A relatively slow growing tree. This there's a number of trees adjacent to this site, but this is tree number five. Um, the address is 276th Street. The tree's about 15 feet tall with a four inch DBH. The condition of the tree is fair. Um, and the tree needs to be removed for a new entrance. Uh, the park is going to be renovated and they're gonna build a uh, new recreation center there. So the sidewalk will be demoed, uh, likely re-poured, and uh, this tree is 
just not in a great spot for them to complete that work. Um, because this, the sidewalk there is narrow, it's a six foot sidewalk, the tree uh, unfortunately cannot be replaced. Uh, and we will uh, assess an in lieu of planting fee since the site is uh, not feasible for a, a new tree there. Here's a photo of the sidewalk. You can see it's a six foot sidewalk. And here's an image of the new center that's gonna be going in. That concludes that hearing, uh, hearing item. Is the applicant or appellant, appellant here to speak? I see a hand. Good evening, hearing officer and public works staff. Good evening. Hi, my name is Melinda Stockman Sullivan. I'm the project manager from San Francisco Public Works for the Gene Friend Recreation Center project, which is proposing to remove the subject tree. I do have a visual presentation this evening. Okay, just one moment. I'll promote you to panelists. And then once you come over, you'll need to unmute yourself again and then you'll be able to share your screen and be seen. And then once you begin speaking, you will have three minutes. And do you have other members of your team who are going to be speaking as well? I do. I have Liz Ranieri, the managing principal from Cruz Ranieri Architects. She's the only other member presenting. Thank you. Okay. Is she going to speak while you're showing the, or, or yes. you're doing it separately? She'll, she'll, she'll speak to the same written presentation. She does not have a separate uh, visual presentation. No, I mean, is she going to be speaking while you're moving this or are you each going to be speaking? speaking separately. Oh, Do I need no. to unmute her now or, no, or I'm after sorry. you're done? After I'm done, sorry. For the after you're done. Okay. Okay. So okay. as soon as you begin, I'll begin the timer. Great. Thank you so much. Melinda Stockman Sullivan, Project Manager, Recreation and Park Department. Uh, this project, this tree removal that's proposed is part of a curve to curve major um, um, new building and site improvements for a recreation center. Now, this slide shows the existing facility at Folsom and 6th Street. Uh, this is one of San Francisco's fastest growing neighborhoods. Uh, we are serving a critically needed recreation program, after school program, with up to 150 kids a day, and also during the summer hours. We are reorienting the building entrance from 6th Street at the top photo to Harriet Street in the bottom photo. Uh, to be safer and to be uh, easier circulation between adjacent parks and the after school program sites of these children. Here are some renderings showing the new facility as proposed and the entrance on Harriet Street. Um, as the buff staff member mentioned, there's only a six foot wide sidewalk. This perspective rendering shows the um, public works standard curb ramp that we're using for narrow sidewalks and shows the condition uh, of the narrow barrenness there. This would be a white curb loading zone that coordinating with MTA and Public Works. And again, this shows um, Folsom Street is in the, in the bottom of the page and the view towards Harriet Street, showing the constraint of the sidewalk. Um, I just wanna briefly point out, this is a $40 million construction cost renovation. We are preserving 17 street trees on site. Uh, at the bottom of the page, sorry, the dash is a little bit light, but you can see the tree we're proposing to remove, um, which is right in front of the building entrance. We're looking at sight lines, accessibility, and um, as the buff staff member mentioned earlier, uh, balancing the need to preserve and increase the urban canopy of trees with the safety and needs of a growing, evolving city. And I want to point out we are planting one street tree in an empty tree well on 6th Street. We're also coordinating with the Folsom Streetscape Project to plant another empty tree well on Folsom for a net gain of one street trees, uh, even with the loss of the tree we're proposing to remove. And we're also 
uh, planting 16 new trees uh, in the site. And at this point, I would say uh, thank you for your for your focus, and I would turn it over to the next presenter. Happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Um, I will unmute uh, the next person, which is Liz. Hi there, can you hear me? Great. Yeah, yes. Uh, okay. Oh, great. Good evening, <coughs> hearing officer and staff. I'm Liz Ranieri, an architect and principal of the design team with Mark Cavaniero and Kuth Ranieri Architects. I'd like to just provide a little clarification on the design, the tree re removal, and general accessibility to the site. Um, the tree proposed, as Melinda mentioned, um, to be removed is to allow for safe and accessible passenger loading for drop off and pickup at the at the entrance of the building. I mean, overall, the Gene Friend Rec Center project endeavors to improve the public right of way through landscape and building and to enhance the safety and accessibility of the new community center. The design team reviewed several potential options for the location of the entrance that, that would uh, have the least impact to the existing street trees while providing welcoming, accessible entry for the building's users, including after school kids, seniors, differently abled athletes and patrons. This location was identified as the most appropriate location for several reasons, including the design team proposed Harriet Street for the new entrance to the new building for its reduced street traffic, its safety and community presence on a quieter neighborhood street. Also, the new entry was located as close to the existing Harriet Park entry as possible to maximize accessibility through the park to the park and the building. This entrance location minimizes grade changes from the existing sidewalk to the building entrance. It minimizes elevation changes within the building. So the majority of the spaces are all on the same level. And the relationship of the entry to the drop-off zones generally promotes safety. The location allows for a visual connection for staff from the reception desk to the passenger drop-off zone and to the park entrance. And kids and other passengers awaiting um, pickup or drop-off, they can, they can be in the lobby and they can see and have a clear sight line to the vehicles um, that are queuing up on Harriet. Removing the tree will make for a much more accessible drop-off and expand the sight lines for safety for kids, users, and staff to the street. Thanks so much. Thank you. Are there um, any members of the public who wish to make a comment? I see a hand. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Uh, so this this is a rec center for people who are, I'm presuming mostly live and work in the south of Market, and <clears throat> the south of Market actually has one of the most appallingly low tree canopy percentages in the city. In this particular area, I believe it's around four percent. Uh, when this project started years ago. Um, it promised it wouldn't reduce green space, but in fact, it, it appears by what's shown on the screen and looking at some of the documents on Rec Park's website that uh, it's increasing building footprint and reducing open green space. This is a city project, city funded. I haven't heard how the, uh, from the project team how they followed those policies uh, set out in the climate action plan. I didn't hear what efforts were made to find alternatives to this location. Um, or what efforts were made to ensure a basal replacement plan for this street tree. It's just not enough to say we're planting trees within the footprint of the renovation. Those trees have no protection and can be removed at any time in the future with zero public process. So as I mentioned in my general public comment, we're really failing our urban forest plan and our climate action plan on trees. 
and a $40 million project seems like it could find a way to plant a few more street trees uh, in the least canopy neighborhood uh, in the entire city. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Are there any other members of the public who wish to make comments? I see a hand. Uh, yes, uh, my name is uh, Michael Nolte and I'm the executive director of Alliance for a Better District 6. Um, this um, project is in uh, District 6. And um, one of the um, interesting parts about when, um, you know, somebody decides to design something, they don't live in the neighborhood. Um, they, uh, you know, they're designing something to look good, to get an award or or to get a present, you know, to look something, you know, they're, they're doing it in a way that they feel is the best way they want to do it. Unfortunately, um, you know, people are going to be coming to this rec center because it's already an existing rec center. So it's just a replacement rec center. And, um, you know, you have to worry about the wind conditions. The, um, there's no overhang. When you take away a tree, one of the things a tree does is um, offer, um, uh, when it rains, um, some sort of coverage for the, from the wind, from the, uh, from the rain, from the sun. Um, and I don't see any of that on um, Harriet Street. And, uh, and then when you say you're um, putting in uh, into two tree wells, additional trees, so you're gonna have a net gain of a tree, which again is false because the tree wells pre-exist and um, those, um, are, that doesn't make a net gain. Um, so um, um, that's misleading. So um, the um, tree wells need to be, um, the trees need to be added into the trees because you're putting a $40 million project together. Um, so that's a promise to the neighborhood to add more trees. Um, and um, again, as the previous speaker said, more trees could have been plant, could can't be planted. And um, when there was another park being planned um, over at Bodecker Park, which is on the other side of Market Street, we pointed out that uh, you could have put an urban garden on top of the, uh, uh, the the building you're building, which again is not being even discussed. So um, a lot of things could have been discussed um, in putting this, but it's there's you're really missing the boat again, and and this is really upsetting when um, you only start talking about trees and the the environment when you want to remove a tree when this should have been discussed in the planning stages. Um, so um, kudos for the- 30 for, seconds. Kudos for the uh, for the person that says, oh, I'm the uh, developer and uh, planned it when you're not even environmental correct, bye. Thank you. Are there any other members of the public who wish to make comment? Okay, I see no hands. <clears throat> if there are no more comments for this item, I will now close this item and will make my recommendations to the director. The next item on today's agenda is order number 210126. May I have Public Works, Public Works make its presentation? Thank you. So this is to consider the uh, order 210126, to consider the removal of one street tree without replacement adjacent to 533 Ellsworth Street. Uh, replacement will be relocated or added to the deferred replacement report if a replacement location is not found within 120 days. Uh, staff removed, uh, staff approved the removal and the public has uh, protested the removal. This tree is a uh, Meluca kincaniveria tree. Um, it's approximately 35 to 40 feet tall. It has a large DBH of 35 inches. The tree is in fair to good condition, um, but the structure is poor. Um, and it, it does have a significant lean or a, a moderate to significant lean. And there are co-dominant stems on this tree with included bark. Well, the overall form of the tree is fair. 
So the reason why we've approved the removal of this tree is due to significant uplift in the path of travel. It is a public hazard and it uh, requires correction. Uh, correction of the the issue is likely going to require a severe root pruning uh, or shaving of a root more than 50% of the root diameter. Uh, so this is either going to destabilize the tree or it's going to cause significant health effects to the tree. Uh, the path of travel is restricted so much so that the, the, the width is only two and a half feet now. Uh, the trunk has grown over the sidewalk and it's actually starting, the sidewalk itself is starting to girdle the tree. And uh, it, it's not an ADA uh, accessible path of travel anymore. Um, and uh, uh, when our forester was out there, they noted that multiple people had to walk into the street to, to uh, get around this tree, probably because they were standing there at the sidewalk, but um, it still goes to show that uh, we, we don't really want people walking into the street uh, when there was a sidewalk there. Here's an image of the co-dominant stem and included bark. This is a considered a pretty poor structure, poor to fair structure for this tree's case, but um, this is a can be a weak point. And during storms or high wind events, uh, we do have we do see tree trees fail due to included uh, bark and co-dominant stems. So this is another large big reason why we. Uh, chose to approve the removal of this tree. And here's some images of the damage. You could see the, the sidewalk at this site has been repaired already in the past. And uh, if we were to just go ahead and repair it again, it's very likely that we will see the same type of damage uh, due to root growth uh, over the next three to five years. So uh, with all those things combined, uh, we've we hate to say it, and we really don't want to don't want to have to make this decision, but we we do need to approve the removal of this tree. So we went ahead and posted it, and that concludes my um, presentation for that that order. Okay, thank you, Public Works. Is the applicant or appellant here to speak? I see a hand raised. Hi, I'm the uh, property owner. Okay, go, good evening. Go ahead. Good evening, hearing officer and staff. Um, so my name is Gary Goldstone, and I'm the property owner at 533 Ellsworth. Um, I moved into the property July of 2016, and the tree in question was part of the aesthetic and charm which we felt enhanced the value of the property, um, and also not only contributed canopy to the street in the neighborhood, but also adds to the aesthetic of the street block. <clears throat> That said, I do recognize that the tree in question is likely not suitable for this location, especially given the size and girth and the width of the sidewalk um, as stated by um, the person just now. And so I'm supportive of removing the tree on that basis, but I'm not okay with non-replacement and so I'd like to request that this tree is indeed replaced at or adjacent to this property, um, but, but with a much smaller profile in order to preserve the property aesthetic and the canopy coverage in the neighborhood. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Are there any members of the public who would like to make who will wish to make comments? I see a hand raised. Hey, thanks. Yeah, this this is an this is an example where um, having a basal replacement policy in place 
would make a really big difference. I'm talking about a 35 inch diameter tree. And if this property owner is lucky, um, you know, he'll get a one and a half inch sapling somewhere nearby. And <clears throat> that's when we talk about when I, you know, when I talk about my public comment, that we've lost almost 1300 street trees. That's literally just counting a tree for a tree, not even counting the DBH, the diameter, the mass of these trees that we're losing. You take out a tree like this and you put in a tiny little sapling and you say, and we say we've done our job of replacing. And from a numbers perspective, that may be true. From a climate perspective, an ecosystem's perspective, it is absolutely not true. Uh, I want to um, encourage the department to please uh, work with this property owner, um, who sounds like uh, he feels pretty bad about this um, this loss. Um, I have a cat to put in front of my house, and I love her dearly. Um, and I can't imagine if I had to cut that tree down and not be able to get it back, not be able to plant anything out there. In my uh, other life, when I'm not attending tree removal hearings, I am a, an accessibility consultant, disability access consultant. The ADA requires a 36 inch width on public rights of way. The California Building Code requires 48 inches. I will say, however, that there are ways that we can be creative um, in terms of perhaps changing the basin dimensions, maybe creating a bulb out. Um, you know, there, there are ways that we can do things if we really want to do this, because even though this is an excess, this is put on the, on the shoulders of accessibility, what ends up happening so much of the time is it means that people who have disabilities don't have access to greenery because we've just paved everything over in the name of there being uh, in the name of access. So just say that we can have all of these things at once. The law does permit for that. And so do our creative and innovative minds that I know we've got uh, on this call. So I'll leave it at that. Thanks. Thank you. Are there any members of the public who wish to make comments? Any other any other comments? I see a hand. Hi, um, Michael Nolte. Um, um, I agree with the property owner saying that the uh, an additional tree should be added um, after the removal of the tree. Uh, obviously, um, um, he has reasons for the removal, but um, I, you know, I think, as he pointed out, uh, when he purchased the property, um, you know, you purchase the property as is, and you you like to see what's there to continue, and uh, not. Um, become, you know, San Francisco is in need of lots more greenery and you, you can't keep on taking away trees. Uh, it's, 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 it's nonsense to see that continuing happening. So anyway, I um, appreciate to see uh, the city working with the uh, property owner and um, adding at least one tree, if not more, um, in the surrounding uh, neighborhood um, or near, right next door or, or at the property line. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other members of the public who wish to comment? Are there any public comments on any items of the agenda? If you um if you have spoken, you are not allowed to speak again. This is for those who might have come late or did not have a chance to speak. There are no others at this time. Okay. Um, then I am closing this hearing. This hearing is now closed. Thank you.